I'm Kate Milliken and this is MS Learn Online. MS is frequently in the news as part of a human interest story about someone living with MS, perhaps about a fundraising event like Walk MS. But from time to time, we also see stories in the mainstream media or online about potential breakthroughs in MS research or treatments. The reliability of these stories is very much dependent on the source. Today, we've brought in a very reliable source to learn about some of the stories you might have seen in the media recently. Dr. Richard Rudick is the director of the Mellon Center for Multiple Sclerosis Treatment and Research at the Cleveland Clinic. Welcome to MS Learn Online, Dr. Rudick. So CCSVI, it's been a big thing in the news in the MS community. What do we need to know? Well, we need to know whether the veins are clogged in MS, which is what CCSVI suggests. Uh, and we need to know, if, is that true? Uh, if it is true, does it have something to do with causing MS, or is it just simply a consequence of MS? We need to know whether the veins are actually causing any aspect of MS. It's still too early to tell. What do you think the society is doing to try to learn more? The society in the United States, as well as Canada, Great Britain, have put out requests for research proposals. They've been reviewing re uh, the research proposals that have poured into the societies and we'll start funding research worldwide this July. That's great to hear. Um, Ampira is also something that's come up because it's got FDA approved and it's supposed to help people with walking. Um, what can you tell us about Ampira? Ampira is a long-acting form of 4-aminopyridine, which is a drug that uh, blocks the potassium channels, which are uh, channels within the nerve fibers themselves, and in experimental conditions, it improves the speed of conduction of the nerves. Uh, in people, it's been shown in a portion of patients with MS to increase walking speed. And it's been approved, which means there's been progress and actually proof. The FDA, based on two clinical trials, approved Ampira for clinical use in January of 2010. It's now on the market. It's a little too early to tell how valuable it'll be. But for people with MS who have walking difficulties, uh, it may be worth a try in some cases. Recent reports have been circulating that there is some research um, moving forward with the Strata study. What do you know about that? The Strata study is uh, a follow-up of the clinical trials for natalizumab or tisabri. All the patients who were in the tisabri clinical trials went into a long-term follow-up study called Strata. And the purpose for that is to try to learn about the benefits and side effects of Tysabri over the longer term. And PML is something that uh, is a side effect. Um, is there any new evidence um, to discuss regarding PML? It turns out that PML is a complication of Tysabri. Uh, and the risk of PML seems to go up from very, very low in the first year to about a one in a thousand in patients who've been on it for more than two years. Uh, we're trying to learn how to predict who's at higher risk versus lower risk because Tysabri is a very, very effective drug and, and it has very few side effects. It just has a, a risk of a rare, very severe complication, PML. People with MS, including me, are always hearing about you know the world of stem cell research and how that, that's kind of in the world of MS. And um, what do you think we need to know about what's happening with stem cell research? I think stem cell research is very exciting. But I think what you need to know is that it's going to take a long time mm -hmm. to evaluate uh, the various forms of stem cells for MS. There is a federally funded uh, research project uh, using what are called mesenchymal stem cells for MS. That's being uh, conducted at the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, and patients will, for the for MS patients, will for the first time receive what are called autologous mesenchymal stem cells. Those are cells that have stem cell properties that are taken from the person's own bone marrow, grown up in the test tube and then re-injected. Uh, patients will start getting injections with these mesenchymal stem cells within this year. But what you need to know is there's great promise, but please be patient. If someone wants to know more about stem cell research, is there a place that you would refer them to go? I'd recommend the National Institutes of Health and the National MS Society. How about Botox? I'm a New Yorker and I'm aware of it all around me with people having it in their face, but it seems to me that, uh, that there's a greater, more important use for MS. Talk to me about it. 
Botox can be used to relax the muscles. Many patients with MS get uh, very stiff, what are called spastic muscles, especially in the legs. Uh, Botox injections can relax those muscles without causing excessive weakness. The other uh, very interesting use of Botox is when the bladder gets very stiff, uh, hyperactive, and doesn't hold the urine. And this can be life-changing for patients. Botox injections into the bladder muscle can relax the bladder muscle and make a huge difference. People can sleep at night, avoid using a lot of medicines. Wow. Um, there's a lot of research, even talking to you today, about all these things that are going on. Uh, how, do, how does someone like me know what research is up to date and accurate versus some of the other stuff that's floating around that may not be as, as efficient? Well, I, I'd have several recommendations. Number one, I would find a doctor who's knowledgeable about MS and rely on that doctor to tell you what's important and what's new and what relates to you. Uh, second of all, there's some sources of information that are very valuable and you can rely on. The National Institutes of Health, the MS Society, uh, they have informational pages that you can look at and you can believe what's written. The third thing I would say is that if research has been published in a peer review journal that's reputable, uh, you can believe it much more than if it comes out in a pamphlet that you may read which could be sponsored by someone with a special interest in a product, for example. Uh, the web is a terrible place to go, generally speaking, because you can't tell what's true and what's not true from just surfing the web. People can put up whatever they want. That's correct. You know, so. MS has been cured many, many times on the web. <laughs> I believe it. I believe it. Thank you so much, Dr. Rudick. If you would like to get more information on MS News, go to www.nationalmssociety.org. This is Kate Milliken for MS Learn Online. Thanks for joining us.